Last week I showed you how to scan your network for computers and open ports using ZenMap or NMap. Today I'm going to show you how you can get the same sort of information from the local machine which you're sat at using Netstat. Now Netstat is not just available in Linux, the command is also available in Windows, although the options to run the command vary between the two operating systems. Like most Linux commands, Netstat has its own manual page, which you can view using man netstat, and you can also get similar information using netstat h. These are two very standard commands in Linux. So Control L, clear the screen. So let's run the command sudo netstat, and it displays quite a lot of information because it's looking at open the ports on the kernel. So yes, that's a bit too much to view really. So what I'm really interested in are the networking ports for protocols TCP and UDP, transmission control protocol and universal datagram protocol. Type in the argument dash A, so that'll be all information, T for TCP and U for UDP. So there is a much smaller list. Still a bit confusing really because it automatically try and resolves IP addresses and what the ports are. So to avoid getting that resolution, you can use the option dash N that is numeric, so you can see the difference now side by side. So you'll see there's two different IP addresses in use here, 127.0.1.1. Depending on how your system is set up, you might see that as 127.0.0.1. These ports are only open to the local machine. They are loopback ports. 0000 is open to the outside world. This is still a bit vague on what processors actually opened that port. So type in the argument P, which will give you the PID number, the process ID, or PID as you can call it. So yes, lots more information now. So port 53, that would be a DNS port, was opened by DNS mask. Port 1716 was opened by KD Connect. Uh, 631 cups, 5353 Avahai, not really sure what that one is off the top of my head, but these are programs in the system, and this is very common for what you would see out of a Linux client. Let's look at something different and check out a Linux server. I've SSH'd across to my NoTrack DNS server. So same command again, sudo netstat natup. Wow, there's lots more in this list. In fact, there is more than a screenful. So you could pipe the command through to less or more, which is like a basic text viewer. So by utilising less, I can now scroll up and down with the arrow keys. You'll see a difference now on the server. We have listening and established. So the listening ports are, as they state, listening. And established is a, an established network connection. So I have SSH connection from, well, this is actually the SSH connection that is active, enabling me to view this. The port numbers range between 1 and 65535 with the first 1023 being known as server ports. Although over time the number of programs being made has grown, so they've occupied spaces normally up to about 10,000, but it actually goes even higher because we have a ports number here, 11211, which is opened by memcached. I expect if I was to Google that port number, it would tell me it was opened by memcached. So out of the ports I have open, 443 and 80 belong to a web server, Light TPD is a web server. 3306 is a SQL port, opened by MySQL. 111, it's called RPC Bind. It is utilized on Linux to request opening of additional ports. The computer or server sends a loopback request to that port, and it can be utilized on NFS, Network File Share. I know from past experience, if you try and block that port, your boot up will not exactly fail, but it will take a very long time and come up with a lot of error messages. 53 is DNS, 22 SSH, and 25 is an email port. But you'll notice the difference here. You've got 127001, so that is a loopback mail port. That is a similar thing for MySQL and Memcached. You don't want those ports open to the outside world. They would be a loopback on the machine. Only the machine itself needs to access them. And there's the same sort of list of ports open under UDP. And you can see the list of IPv6 to IPv4. IPv6 has 6 as the suffix. There is no definition to show an IPv4 port. If you want to view a specific port, you could pipe the command through to grep. 
and then type in colon and the port number. So let's say SSH port 22, where I can see the listening port and established connection. If you want to get a continuous update, you can use dash C, continuous, so it updates every few seconds. So you can see it now scrolling up the screen. Being able to see the established connections allows you to check on IPs accessing a web server. I'm not going to show you on my live web server because that would be giving away too much information because it is on a different subnet and has a different user account. As you can see, most of my IP addresses are in the 192.168.62 range and my username tends to be quids. Fair enough, I can handle that on my own internal network, but a web server on the outside world does have different information because it's more open to attack. Anyway, you can see the established connection here accessing the web server. So further up it would have been established and now it's gone down to time wait and because there's been no further activity it's just switched back to listen. So if I make a connection again you'll see established then it goes down to time wait and then it would just switch back to listening. So a useful way of determining whether a web server is open and accessible. So control C to close that. You can utilize netstat if you're going to write firewall rules on your system. You actually need to know what you have open and closed to know what you need to protect. And you can also use it for fault finding, as you see there with the web server, because I was able to access it and I saw the connection, I was able to see it on netstat as well. Although I suppose the fact I had the page come down was an indication that the web server was working. That was a look at how to use netstat. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.